Hey guys, welcome to another machine learning tutorial. So in all my previous machine learning examples, I used available data directly from the sklearn datasets module. And a lot of people have asked me how they should load their data if they have their own data sets. So today I want to show you how you load the data from a file. I will show you four different ways, one with pure Python, two with NumPy and one with the pandas library. I will also show you what you should do with headers, missing data and how to get the correct data type. So please make sure to watch all the way to the end. And now in this tutorial, I'm going to use the spam based data set. So if we Google this, then the first entry leads us to this site. And this is a popular website to get machine learning data sets. And in the spam based data set, we want to classify emails as spam or no spam. So we can then go to the download folder and load the spambase.data. And I already did this, so I have this here. And this is in CSV format, so comma separated values. And usually the ending here would be .csv, but here it's .data, which is fine too. So let's start and let me show you how we can load this. So first let's load this with pure Python and the CSV module. So we can import CSV. This is already built in in Python. Then let's specify our file name equals. So let's have a look at this again. This is called spam base data. So let's call this spam base dot data. And now we say with open our file name in read mode as F and then we say our data equals and then we can use the CSV module and call the reader and here we have to give it our F and also the delimiter so the values that separates all the data and in this case it's a comma and this will give us an iterator and then we can use the list method to convert this to a list. And now we have the data in a list. So let's convert this to a NumPy array. So let's import NumPy as NP. And then up down here, we say our data equals a NumPy array from the data. And then for example, we can print the data dot shape. So let's run this and then we see that it worked. And if we have a look at the website, then we can see here the number of samples is 4,601 and the number of features is 57. So here we have 4,601 and 58. And this is because our um, data holds both the features and the class label right now. So now here in this case, the class label is the very last column. So the next thing we want to do is to split our um, list here into features and class labels. So for this, let's get the shape. So let's say number of samples and the number of features equals data dot shape. And then we use list slicing. So first thing we want to do is to decrease this by one. So let's say number of features minus equals one, because we only have 57. And then we use list slicing. So we say x equals data. And then we say um, colon. So we want all the rows. And for the columns, we want to start at column zero and all the way to the number of features. And this, this last column is excluded. So this will only hold the features. And for the y, this is data. And again, we want all the rows, but only the last column. So now we have split this and now for example, if we print x dot shape and y dot shape, and if we run this, 
then we see that this worked and now we have it in the correct um, format for example now we can put it or give it to our classifier for the fit method and start our training so this is the first way that I wanted to show you um, however I would not recommend this because this is usually slower and also needs more code than the other methods which I'm going to show you now but you should still know how to load a file manually so let's forget this now and let's delete this and now let me show you how we can do this in numpy so in numpy we can do this with only one line so we can say data equals numpy and then we use a method that is called load txt and this also needs the file name and the delimiter equals a comma and this is all we need so now if we run this then we see that it worked too and this is much simpler and also faster so this is the first method that we can use with numpy however there's an even better one which i would recommend so this is data equals numpy and the second method is called gen from txt and this also needs the file name and the delimiter equals the comma and now if you run this then we see that this worked too so this is my preferred method with numpy and it basically does the same as this one but it offers a little bit more options for the parameters for example here we can deal with missing data which i want to show you in a second so um yeah so this is the function with numpy and now as a last thing i want to show you how we can do this with pandas so if you're already familiar with pandas then you can use this too and um here we have a function um that is called uh, read csv so we say data frame because in, in pandas we usually deal or call this data frame and then we say pd dot read underscore csv and again our file name and um, we could also give it the delimiter equals the comma and then we have it as a data frame and then what we can do is to convert this to a numpy so we can say data equals data frame to numpy to numpy and then we can do the same as we are doing here for example we can split this into x and y and now if we run this then we see that this worked too but um, here we now have one row to less and this is because here we have to be careful because um, pandas tries to read a header and in this case we don't have a header so we have to say header equals none and then if we load this then we see that it is correct again so this is how we can um, use pandas both are fine so i would recommend using this if you only want to use numpy and if you are familiar with pandas then i would use this one because this is even more options and it's also a little bit faster so yeah so that's how you can load this and now let's talk about the data type the header and missing data so one thing that is good practice is to already specify the data type if you know it so for example here we can give the argument data type equals for example numpy float 32 and down here we can do the same thing for the um for the pandas function so now if we run this then we see this work too and for example we can print um, the type of data too then uh, we see um, 
Oh, here we see it's only one NumPy array. Uh, let's print the type of data, let's say zero, zero. Then um, we should see that is, it is in NumPy float 32. And it's good practice to always specify this if you know it. So if you know the data, then put it here because otherwise the function has to figure out the data type for itself. And this usually takes a little bit more time and it can also be wrong. And yeah, so some algorithms, some classifier expect this as float or I think the most of them expect this as float. So that's what I would recommend um, to do here. Um, if you don't put it in here and want to convert it later, by the way, then you can still do this by saying data equals um, numpy as array. And then you put in the data and then as data type, data type equals um, and then here your float 32. Um, yeah, so that's what you can do with um, with the data type. And now let's talk about a header. So in this case, we don't have a header. But um, let's say in our file, we have a header where we for example, have the feature descriptions feature one, feature two, and so on. So during the loading, we don't want this, of course, and then what we can do here is, um, first of all, let's run this and see what happens. And then we get an error because our functions cannot figure out the first row. So what we can do here is we can simply skip this. So for the chen from text method, we need to say skip um, header and then the number of rows we want to skip. So in this case, it's one. And the same for the pandas function. But here we have to be careful because here the argument is called skip rows equals one. And now if we run this, then this worked again. And we again have the correct shape and it skipped the header. So this is what you should do if you have a header here. And um, now as a last thing, I want to talk about missing values. So a lot of time, um, for example, there are missing values. For example, here, we just have a comma and then no entry. And um, so if you run this, then let's print. Um, for example, let's print x and then in the first row let's print the feature 0 to 5 and down here the same so now if you run this um we see we have a n a n so this stands for not a number and these functions can figure this out um on their own so if it is empty or I think if there is a dash or a NAN. So then they can automatically see that this is not a number. But sometimes you also have a string here, which doesn't make sense. And now if I try to run this, um, then this should produce an error because it cannot um, figure out the string here because you said all these should be floats. So what you can then do here is we can specify additional missing values by saying missing values equals and then here you put in a list and here we can put in hello. And for the pandas function, the argument is na values. And then here you have to put to use a list. So I recommend to check out the documentation whenever you need the arguments, you don't have to memorize this. So here we say hello. 
and then it knows that it should ignore these. So now if you run this, then this worked again and it filled these the hello with not a number. And you could also specify what it should use instead. So here we can use the argument filling values equals. And so you might want to set this to zero. Um, but so in this example, so just that we can see it, I will set this to 9999 and as a float. And for the pandas function, what we can then do after loading is to call data frame and then set data frame fill n a not a number to 9999.0. And now if we run this, then we see that here it replaced the not a number um, with 9999. And here I have to say, of course, data frame equals this new data frame. And now if I run this again, um, then we see that it worked too for the pandas method. So this is how we can deal with missing numbers. So usually you want to say this to zero and then you should be good to go because a lot of errors that beginners see is because there are missing numbers and then your algorithm crashes because it doesn't know how to deal with this. So always make sure that you um, deal with missing numbers. Then I recommend to specify the data type and now you should also know how to deal with headers. And yeah, so these are the preferred two methods that you should know the numpy chan from text method and the pandas read CSV method. So yeah, that's all you need. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this, please subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.